Hey folks, Mike here from TA Outdoors. I'm in the woods. I've got my dog Jax here with me. And today we're gonna to try and build a survival shelter with some Gorilla Tape. So this is the Gorilla Tape. It's just the kind of bog standard tape. And really this is nothing new. It has been done before, but I thought I'd give it a go. So what I'm gonna do is build the shelter between this tree here and this tree over here. I'm gonna keep it relatively low profile purely because I only have a few hours out here. I don't wanna overheat my dog because it's 30 degrees Celsius and it's very hot and muggy and there's bugs everywhere. So I'm gonna try and keep it lower so that I need to collect less materials. But that's the aim. This is about eight and a half feet, the gap between this, which is easily enough for me to be able to lie down in. I'm not going to build a raised bed, but I would do if I wanted to stay off the, keep off the ground and keep my body warm. This is just gonna be a real quick survival shelter, keeping it nice and low profile. I'm gonna use dead wood. There's plenty of deadfall around in this woodland. Just gonna scavenge around. Hopefully my dog's gonna help me. Sometimes he's helpful, sometimes he's absolutely useless and he just runs off with the sticks, but we will see. Let's go and get some wood. As you can see, there is dead wood everywhere. Keep Jack's hydrated, got my water and a dog bowl, so he knows where to find it if he does get warm, although I've lost him. Oh, there he is. Hey, <whistles> stop eating grass. Let's go build a shelter. So I'm trialing out a different microphone. Let me know what you guys think. It's a bit more of a radio mic so I can walk around like this. I actually not have to, I can come away from the camera and just film a bit easier when I've got the dog around. So I'm gonna try and use deadwood where I can. This looks like I've chopped it. I don't really wanna use any tools. So Jax is pretty much just following and getting distracted by grass. I think this will be wide enough. Yeah, that's gonna be wide enough, but I'm gonna keep it sort of low about there. Normally with a lean-to shelter, I'd want this pretty much head height, almost above my head actually, just so there's plenty of room to get under the shelter. But like I say, this is gonna be a quick quick shelter build, so I'm gonna use less materials by going lower down, probably about here. So now let's get the Gorilla Tape out, the fun part. It's quite a big roll, it's easily gonna be enough because all I need to do is just tie the, the ridge line in, the ridge pole, the sort of main horizontal pole. This is obviously super sticky stuff being Gorilla Tape, but you can just tear it like that. So it should be easy enough to get this shelter, this shelter up. Jack, so I'm gonna focus on this side to begin with. I want it about there. So I'm gonna start by wrapping it on the ridge, ridge pole first. Okay, up, round that side. I don't want to obviously use all this roll, I say about there. About here. Naturally, you probably wouldn't be walking around in the woods with Gorilla Tape, but you might have it in your car or something like that. It's a good piece of survival item. It's a good item to have in your survival kit. Just a bit of duct tape or Gorilla Tape. So what I'm doing is just going underneath, underneath this ridge pole and around the tree three times. And then I'm gonna come the other way. So round here, making an X shape because that should hold it nice and strong. So that's one wrap, two wraps. I've lost my dog already. Three wraps, tear it off. It is not pretty, but that's pretty stable, you know. Oh, Jax, where's he gone? Here. <whistles> oh, shit. Here, you have that stick. And just stay close. Stop running away. Please. Stick should keep him entertained for a bit. So as you can see, there's pretty much an X shape here. I've just gone, started by sticking the tape to this ridge pole here. I went around here and up, around here and up three times. Then I wrapped it around the other way and came around this way three times. And I've done the exact same, the other side of this tree. And that is, that, do you know, that's not going anywhere. For me, the ultimate test to see, ow, to see whether there's bits of stick everywhere here. The ultimate test to see, the ultimate test to see whether uh, your ridge pole is steady enough is if, can you swing from it? <laughs> I'm a bit skeptical here. This bark's a bit loose, I'm really, Quite nervous about that, this. Right, uh, Jax, over here, over here. Go on over there. 
Go on over there, go on. Go away. I don't want to get my dog hurt by doing this. I don't recommend trying this at home. I'm basically going to try and swing from this. Oh, this could hurt. This could hurt bad. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's gorilla tape. That's easily going to take the weight of the shelter if it can take my whole body weight. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. I'm amazed with that. I did not think that would hold at all. Right, now I need to get some vertical poles going on down here. Probably up to about here, a little bit like a foot above this ridge pole itself. But I should probably clear this area before I do that. There's so many ants and bugs around. It's gonna be, I'm gonna get bitten so much in shorts. Not a wise idea, Mike. Let's wear shorts in the middle of the summer in the woods where there's bugs. That was the centre, that was the ridge pole I went for first, but you can see it's just a bit too short. Typical, by like a foot. But I'm not going to waste that. Oh, ants. I'll show you guys these ants in a minute. They're the southern wood ant, biggest ants in the UK. And they spray formic acid. They're called formica rufa. And they spray formic acid. I've shown it on my channel before. Okay. Do you mind, Jax? You see? What have you found? What have you found? He's found something. Go on, boy, dig it. Go on, boy, dig it. Good boy. What's in there? You get it, you get it, you get it. Oh, you got tree roots. Nice one. We've got some natural cordage going on here. Go on, dig it, boy. Dig it, boy. Good boy. You get those tree roots. I mean, this one is a bit, bit long. It's a bit high. But this is, like I said, this is not going to be a pretty sh survival shelter. It's going to be pretty damn ugly. But looks aren't important in this. So they're going to be kind of all different lengths. I'm just going to, I'm just going to grab them. I can change the angle of these if I want, but I quite like it quite tall. Okay, buddy, that's enough. Come on, that's enough digging. Come on. Yeah, you're tiring now. You're tiring yourself out. Good boy. Look at the state of your nose. So I've bought my chest mount GoPro just to because I've got the dog with me and it's just so much easier to manage him with a chest mount on rather than the big camera. So he's just discovered pine cones. Great. I've got my backpack over here as well, which has my dog's food uh, and camera gear and things in, but I don't really need anything in that. So it's just a case of stacking. So when you've got a branch too long like this one, you just find a wedge in a tree, two trees together. This one's actually pretty rotten. I think it's gonna break that. Okay, don't find that one. Oh, there's some more over here. Oh, here's one. So all you do is slip it between the gaps and then use it as a lever. And that snaps the branch nice and easy. Now it's a bit shorter to length. Little tip when you're building a survival shelter is look for resources that are close to your camp. You don't have to travel miles to begin with. Some maybe might argue go further to begin with to get your materials because you're only gonna get weaker. But I always think try and use what you've got here first. At least you then might have half a shelter to protect you in a survival situation. This might not break. This is gonna be, this is gonna be really quite a, quite a bad one. I don't wanna trip over. Oh no, she did. She's still too long. Let's try it about there. Oh. That didn't break so good. And now that's too short. What a mic. It's all too short. Hey look, we all make mistakes. That one might be okay. Just, it's a funny shape though. These are too short. Jack, stop digging the holes, man. Come on, leave them, leave them. Thank you. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Dead wood everywhere, as you can see. I am very fortunate to have this many resources in this woodland. 
that's quite a rotten bit. Let's snap him off. The spiders are starting to nest now as well, starting to make their webs. Oh, too short again. Hey buddy, good boy. You need to keep drinking. Keep drinking your water. Come on, let's find some more. Here's a, here's a good one. I'm sort of going for the easiest, easiest access. How rotten is that? Oh God, and we gotta be quick, Jax. There's ants everywhere. Come on, buddy. There's your bit, go on. Oh, she's, she's a big one. Something really satisfying about building a shelter from natural materials. I have a feeling this other one's, they're both too long. But like I said, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter, to be honest. That is massive though. This is going to be too tough to break. It's a boost. Oh, maybe not. Oh, we've got a lot more to collect. We're getting, we're getting there. We're not even halfway yet. The logs are definitely not level. I'm not quite happy with how level they are. They're sort of all leaning, leaning their way. They need to come around. Normally with an axe, I'd chop these little vines up. We are getting towards the halfway point. It's handy, I've got a leverage point right near my shelter, so I don't have to travel very far for that either. Perfect. Cool. I'd say we're nearly halfway. There's a good boy. Oh, look at these ants. Mm, I have brought Jack some bis dog biscuits. Uh, if I can find them, where did I put them? So I bought my dog these uh, charcoal dog biscuits. They're all broken up now, but they're like the classic Bonio type things. I think they are Bonios actually. These things, they're charcoal biscuits, really good for their like teeth. He loves them. Sit. Good boy. He loves them and it just keeps him near me at camp if I treat him every now and then. He knows the good foods around here. Good boy. Let's get back to building, boy. You like that, don't you, buddy? Good lad. Get it down, your son. Oh, it's a toughie. Wow. resinous oh look at the resin in this this is the stinkiest piece of wood look at all that resin can you guys see that all that fat there's a bit of fat wood in there these kind of lighter golden patches that's pine resin and when you smell it i didn't even have to put my nose near it it just absolutely stinks of resin that stuff is really good fire lighting material i could break that down with a knife get some shavings from it and that would uh, take a spark from a ferro rod or even a lighter, obviously, really well. Burns for quite a long time as well. But it's going on the shelter. Oh, just. Shelter's still going to do the same job. Even when that one has just touched the ridge line, it's still going to do the same job. The main area to protect is under here where you sleep. It doesn't really matter how much overhang you have. In the short term, anyway, you may notice that is my bushcraft camp. I'm actually in the same woodland as my bushcraft camp. That's two. What I tend to do is just lean them up against a tree like this. And that way, when I go to collect more, it, look, it, it stands out in the forest and I can see exactly where they are. If, they were, if I left them all lying on the ground, I'm just going to lose them again. If I lean them up against a tree, then I know I can find them again quite easily. That's too big. That's 
to here. Let's just lean them up against random trees. That's what I tend to do when I'm shelter building. Too rotten. Oh no, he's all right. He's all right, that's good. We're making progress. I don't want to take any wood from my camp because I need that wood there. So I'm just going to leave that. It's looking good though. Hunting tower is still intact. Oh, I recently built my dog shelter actually. Let me quickly take my dog in there. Come here. Where is he? Come here. Good boy. Let's see what you look like in your shelter. Come on, show you. Look what I built for you. Here, what's he? Go on up there, go on up there. In there, in there, get it. Oh yeah, life of luxury. He fits so well in there. That's his bed and his raised bed that I built. And a little lean-to shelter there. That's the style I'm going for. You like it in there, buddy? <laughs> you good boy. Yeah, we need to get a rug for you. So much dead wood. Still can't believe I wore shorts. Such a bad idea. I'm gonna look for thicker pieces. Thicker pieces means you have to collect less. The, th the thinner you go, the more logs you're gonna have to collect. If you go for slightly thicker, you don't have to collect as much. Yes, it's heavier, but I think you expend a bit less energy on traveling. Boy. This way. It's handy having a white dog. I can just see the white flash in the, in the forest. He's gone straight back to his hole. Look, really productive, Jax. This is quite long. Can I get two out of it? Nope, but it'll do. There we go. Oh, we're so close. Jax, that is not cool. That's inside the shelter. Hey! <whistles> Stop it! Couple more, couple more. I reckon two more, two or three more. Man, this is where, this is our shelter. You gotta stop digging, yeah? Gorilla shelter, 50% complete. There's a couple of pokey branches here oh, that I need to get off. So while Jax is busy eating his sticks, this is the shelter itself. So you can see with all that weight on it, gorilla tape's not moved at all. Same this end, not moved at all, no budging. That's gonna hold real easy. And it's, it's a great one man lean to shelter, but the downside is there's loads of gaps, loads of gaps, which means if it rains, if you look around here, I try to keep all the pokey sticks this side of the shelter rather than facing in towards me. It just saves me having to break them off in the first place. And any debris or branches that I put on here can just rest on top of these these will help to secure it and keep them in place. So I didn't snap them on this side. This helps keep all the debris and whatever in. But I'm pretty pleased. That's all stuff that's found in the woods. You can see it's all like different lengths and snapped off and yeah, pretty happy with that. But now I need to cover it with something because this is by no means gonna keep me dry at all. This is like a sieve if it rains. So I need to cover it with branches. Now I have to look for kind of green branches that's widely available. If you look over here, there's a bit more green. There's rhododendron there, which is like a more of a shrub, a bush. Whilst it is easily available there, it's actually quite hard to snap off with, you know, no tools. So it's going to be quite time consuming. I do have grass and a bit of moss, but it's so dry. I don't really want to pick all that up. Uh, so I'm going to go for over there, which you might be able to see. Bracken. There is lots of it. So this is bracken. Although it looks nice and green and very friendly, this is pretty unforgiving stuff. Firstly, it harbors ticks. 
which most of you around the world should know what a tick is. If you don't, look it up. They're a nightmare bug that can cause a lot of problems to dogs and humans, and you can get Lyme's disease from it and things. But these are full of moisture, actually, when you crack them open. Where's Jax? He's there. But these obviously have quite a broad, broad-ish area, surface area, so they can be good for shelters. Most people prefer not to use bracken for shelters, purely because it's buggy, it harvests bugs, and it's just not ideal. It is a summer plant in the winter, it wilts down and goes completely brown and dry, like this one here. There, it goes all brown and dry, and it just really doesn't do much for shelter coverage. But for the time being, and for the resources that I've got in my area, this is ideal, isn't it, buddy? So I'm gonna harvest this. The other thing that's quite dangerous, let me show you. The other thing about bracken is when you snap it, you can't really see it here. But if you snap this stalk in a certain way, if you go to pull it like that and pull the plant up, it actually, it can split and make a razor sharp like knife edge, which can really cut up your hands, which is another reason people don't like using it for shelter. So just be aware if you're using bracken as a, as a proofing material to help reduce water getting into your shelter. If you snap it, it really can get into your hands quite bad and cut them up, so just be aware of that. We're a bit early at the moment, but on the back and the underside of the leaf, you can sometimes see the black spores. We're still early in the season yet. It won't be till kind of end of August, really, that we'll start to see that. But you can see it on certain plants. With bracken, there's a number of different ways you can, uh, you can get it. Obviously with a knife and some gloves is the safest way, but, you can, Jax, here, you can if you get it right, you bend it over and you wallop the stalk with a stick, like that, you can, you can break it off without having to harm your hands at all, really. So that's just one of the ways that I do, just bend the stalk, even that just cut into me a bit then. I mean a knife is obviously easiest, or taking your time and breaking it, but it's really, Nasty stuff when it breaks. Bloody bugs everywhere. So I'm just gonna collect a load in a bunch first before I, rather than just keep going back and forward to the shelter, I'm just gonna collect a load first and probably get eaten alive by bugs at the same time. Oh, I just found a really cool way of uh, getting it off. Let me show you. This is, this is a cool technique I've literally just learned. So what you do is you grab the stalk, you snap it like so, just bend it, and then do circles, twist around in a circle, boom. It just breaks up the fibers real easy. That came off so quickly. Yeah, you got it, nice one. I got bracken for days. Good old Alfie. Don't see much of him these days. Oh, for the aesthetic. Peace. Digging his bloody hole. I knew he wasn't was up to no good. We got a good map. Where is he? Come on, let's go. Just gonna leave them around here at the back. Because I can do all that later time-consuming process. Oh, there's the ants, wow. Let me show you these. Can you see that? These are everywhere, these southern wood ants. They are all summer, they're everywhere. So I've got to keep jacks moving so they don't crawl up him and bite him. The forest floor is just alive with them. I don't know if you can see if I try and go out like that. Sometimes you can hear them, but they're everywhere. Can I just point out that most people that know my dog 
will understand that this is a very rare sight, what you're seeing here. He never sits still normally in the woods. So I am filming this while it lasts. Got to make the most of this moment. A Jack Russell Terrier sitting still. How rare. <laughs> oh well, at least I know where he is. We're just before spider season at the moment. Spiders come in August, they start doing, the orb weavers start making massive webs from in this forest. And it's not pleasant because they tend to make them about head height. So you walk into them and you never expect it. We've got another two weeks, I'd say, until they start doing their webs. See, this is the difference I was talking earlier about it being dead. It's pretty useless when dead except for fire lighting, tinder. You want that nice broad kind of green part of it, green leaves, not these brown crimcool ones. So I'll just show you this one as well, little tip. Try and come from underneath the plant. Crouch down, come underneath, just with a thumb and forefinger. Bend it, get that right angle like there, that's the weak point. Pinch either side with your thumb, like this. And then just spin, pinch and spin. And then it goes, just rips off. Look at it, just a forest of bracken. And by the way, do not worry about me harvesting all of this and it not growing back. This is super fast growing. Grows back really, really quickly. Uh, and it grows up to like, I've seen it about 10 feet high. Not in this area, but near where I live. 10 feet. It loves fighting for the sunlight. It grows really, really quickly. Just dominates. It dominates wood, woodlands and, and heathlands. The difference between this and fern is fern, fern usually grows low down and wide. Bracken usually has a nice long stalk to it and it grows up really high. There are species of fern that do grow high, but in the UK certainly that's the difference I've noticed with the bracken and fern. Fern likes damp, really damp areas near rivers, lakes, bracken likes drier areas usually. So the key with doing the bracken on this shelter is I need to build it from the, the base up. Generally with shelters, when you're building a shelter and you've, uh, you've done your structure like this and you need to proof it and cover it with something, you usually should start from the bottom up and just stack the layers on top of each other just to give that tiling effect and that helps with the runoff of water. A common thing to do is to grab the, the stalk end of the bracken and just shove it in inside, which I've made the mistake of doing in the past, to, to, keep, to pinch it there, to keep it all there. The problem with this, let me show you, the problem with shoving the stalk in like that is when it rains, the rain is going to drip down, come through here, drip down this stalk and then drip onto you in the shelter. So you don't want these sticking into your shelter really, you want them going kind of across and away and you can weave them in and out. So if I twist this round, you can just weave it in and out like that. And it's just a little bit safer. It will still drip. Personally, I just have them on the outside completely and just let that all sit on the outside. So let's start building from this corner. And I'm gonna put quite a thick layer on the base just because it's a nice wide area for the next layers on top to, to build up on. Take your time doing this bit as well. If you just rush and dump it on, you won't cover the gaps as quickly. Take your time to, to sort of try and find the gaps. I'm just layering this long ways with the outside of the leaf facing the outside of the shelter because that's naturally where it protects from the rain anyway. That's quite a long piece. And I'm gonna need a lot of bracken for this. It's like a jungle shelter, this. The jungle. Jax, get out of here. That might look like a lot, but that really isn't much at all. I can see loads of gaps in there. So I'm easily gonna to have to gather four or five more times that amount. Looking better from the inside though. 
Uh, it's good to harvest the materials that are fairly near your camp. Spend, you expend less energy, I find. So you can probably see from, even though I've covered the whole shelter now with bracken, you can see lots of light patches underneath, which is not a good thing, because that means the rain's gonna come through those light patches. So although the whole shelter's covered, I now need to see where those light patches are and put more bracken and layer it on top of there so that it's completely dark. Because at the moment there's so much light at the bottom, which means I didn't put enough layers on the bottom, which is a bit of a, bit of a schoolboy error. Still a bit light up here and in the bottom in the middle. So here is the finished shelter, finished survival shelter. It's not amazing, but it's a gorilla tape shelter. I'm pretty happy with it. I'd certainly keep dry in there. It's a lot darker. I filled in all the gaps. There's a few little gaps left, but most of that is pretty much dark. So I would stay waterproof. The gorilla tape is holding up really well. Pleased with that, it's not budged at all. And nor has it this side. There's loads of bracken on it, but it needs at least another two or three feet thickness if it was gonna make a major impact on warmth in the winter. But obviously this would all die back eventually. I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm pretty pleased with that. Simple lean-to. The other thing to remember is I didn't actually use any tools at all. I used no hand tools, I used no tools whatsoever. The only thing I did use was the Gorilla Tape. So this whole shelter was just built by my hands and with my dog doing nothing except digging, which he's doing now. But yeah, so you can see it's pretty much snapped off. I found old bits of branches that, were, that I had saw, sawn in the past, just over on the forest floor where I do, where I make cooking tripods and things like that. But most of this looks all snapped off. And yeah, the ridge lines all snapped off. It's pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. It's nice to be out in the woods doing something practical. Obviously, I'm not going to leave this shelter up with the Gorilla Tape here because, you know, it's plastic in the environment. It's not good for the environment. I was just showing you what you could do in that sort of situation. So I will just take this whole shelter down and uh, rebuild another one one day. Keep the Gorilla Tape. I'm not going to throw that away. I'll probably use it for something. Well, thank you all so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. It's nice to be here out in the woods, even in the bug season, to be building a shelter and have my dog with me. Who is just shredding everything. I appreciate you watching. Please hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed it and more shelter building videos. Also tick the bell notification and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Are you done? Jax? Jax? Thank you. Thank you, let's go, come on.